Hi and welcome to Vulcan from Zero to Hero. In this section, we are going to take a look at Vulcan SDK and we will learn how to set up a development environment for Vulcan. In this video, we are going to run Hello Vulcan on Windows. Hi again! This video is about running your first Hello Vulcan sample with your codes. We are going to write our C++ codes with Visual Studio on Windows 10 platform. But for those developers who want to run their Vulkan codes on other operating systems such as Linux and OS X, we will have those tutorials in next two following videos. But please note that from section 2, all codes will be run on Windows and Visual Studio. Because Vulkan is a cross-platform, you won't need to change your Vulkan codes on each platform. However, you need to handle system events in your code, for example in creating thread, creating native window via system functions, or you can leave it to cross-platform frameworks such as GLFW, SDL, or whatever you prefer. Let's open Visual Studio and create a C++ empty project named Hello Vulkan. Let's create the main C++ file and add it to our project. Because I rather to build this program on 64-bit operating system, so I need to change the project configuration. This depends on your target machine. You can skip this part and build your code for 32-bit operating system. Let's start with some codes. Include iOS stream to your code. This will give you stdcout function to print out your debug information into the console. First, create an enter point. By default, the main function has to return exit success. In fact, exit success is equal to zero. First, print out Hello Vulcan to the console using STDC out. Now set a breakpoint here, then build your code and run your project. Now it's time to link Vulkan to our project. First, I need to add Vulkan headers to our codes. In the previous videos, we set up Vulkan SDK, and the default location of Vulkan SDK is in the root of drive C.
There must be a Vulkan SDK environment variable in your user environment variables. This environment variable indicates the location of Vulkan SDK. In fact, this variable was set via Vulkan SDK installation file. So this helps you to add Vulkan headers and libraries via this environment variable. And this helps us to build our codes with new Vulkan SDK easily. Just add path of Vulkan header using Vulkan underline SDK. And as you can see, the Vulkan underline SDK indicates to C Vulkan SDK 1.81.0. Please note that our project needs to find Vulkan header files in order to compile our codes. So, we need to address Vulkan headers from here. Go back to your code and include Vulkan header. I mean Vulkan.hpp. Time to address your libraries to your code. Here, there are two types of libraries, either for 64 or 32-bit operating systems. I need 64-bit, but if you build your code for 32-bit operating system, you need to link your code to the appropriate one. Let's create a Vulkan instance object and name it underline VK underline instance. We need Vulkan instance create info. Don't worry, we will talk about it in more details in our next chapter.
Now call VK create instance function which needs the following parameters. The first one is work on instance create info. The next one is a callback. We can skip it though. It's not needed. Just set null pointer for it. And finally a pointer to work on instance object. This function comes back with the result which is a type of VK result. This is an enum. If the result is equal to VK underline success, it means everything is fine. But if the function fails, the application will print out failed message. Make sure to free resources of this instance by calling this method. Set a breakpoint here and build it, then run it. And once we get success message, it means we've initialized Volcan instance successfully. Thank you very much and tune in for next session. In the next video, we are going to run Hello Volcan on Linux.